to try and get close and give it everything. Come at me with your full power, Tony! If there is one thing action shonen are known for, it's the action. I mean, it's in the genre title. Across all shonen anime I have seen, it is rare for the fight scenes not to be my favorite part of the show. Even shonen I don't particularly care for, I will normally enjoy the fights. But there is a big difference between a fight I just think is cool and one that knocks me off my couch, not in a metaphorical way. And Boku no Hero has some of my favorite fights in anime. Looking at some of the great and some of the more lackluster fights in anime, I've come up with four things that a great fight needs to have. These are narrative stakes, excitement, production values, and a lasting impact. Not to say that all fights need all of these, though the more they have, typically the better. Narrative stakes are all about the weight the battle itself has on the story. It can be as simple as a good guy fighting a bad guy to save the world, but they can be much more nuanced and personal. The narrative stakes are something that is typically established even before the fight starts to give us a reason to care about why the fight is taking place. For example, in Attack on Titan, the the stakes are the character's lives, and it is established very early on that fighting a titan means putting your life on the line, which gives all the battles a lot of attention right away. The narrative stakes can also be the ideals the characters have, often seen through the battles in the Fate series where the characters are fighting for their ideals and what it means to be a hero. The clash of ideals on top of the battle itself gives these fights a lot more weight to them which makes them more interesting. The excitement is the next aspect of the fight and it is probably the most broad one here. In part because I could not figure out exactly what all I wanted to include here. Though I see excitement as the thrill of being in the fight itself and this comes from many things. Sometimes it is the moves each character uses and how they are trying to overcome the other or maybe it is just the tactics and becomes more of a mind game with the fighters trying to outsmart each other. Unpredictability really comes into play here as well, both in the fight as a whole and also with each individual move. In order to sustain the excitement, the fight also needs to make sense, given the context of the show. Too many events coming out of nowhere can really break a viewer's immersion, causing all the excitement to just not stick. This is also where the emotional impact of a fight can come into play, where we want to cheer for the hero, want to see them overcome or feel their pain when they're hit and all that. So yeah, I guess excitement covers a lot of different things here. And then the production values. This is pretty self-explanatory. It is about how the animation is able to convey the actions of the characters and how the soundtrack is able to enhance the mood. This certainly ties into the excitement, but I see excitement as being more of the narrative, while the production values are how the narrative is presented. This is why the fights in One Punch Man are so loved. They look amazing. And lastly, lasting impact. While not part of the fight itself, the impact of the fight cements the fight as part of the narrative. A good fight will somehow change the story and the characters from this point on. It could be the character dying, maybe the world being saved, or maybe something much smaller like the character learning something or got a new power. The lasting impact can also be on the viewer where they understand something more about the world, even if it is something the characters already know. The lasting impact really is whatever the fight does to matter in the end. So with these aspects covered, let's get into a few of the fights from the show. Also, if I haven't warned you yet, the series of videos will spoil all of season one and two of the show. So let's start with the beginning. Even though I already covered that in detail, I did not look at the fights much. Though really, there wasn't all that much to these fights. In the first two episodes, it was basically All Might Punch the Slime Monster, the end. But despite how short these battles were, there is still a lot going on with the characters and the narrative here. With the first appearance of the slime monster, the stakes were simple. Deku's life was in danger. The excitement is all my coming to save him. The production values were that it looked cool, though not all that memorable. And the lasting impact was Deku meeting All Might and everything going from there. The show didn't really stand out in this fight. It was only there in service of the narrative. Though the fight not being great really isn't a bad thing, as its purpose wasn't to be a grand fight, but though it still works as a more simple example of how to do a fight. The next fight is when the slime monster captures Bakugo and this one is a lot more interesting. The narrative stakes are much greater here. For one, Bakugo's life is in danger, but there are also the stakes for Deku and All Might here. All Might looks gone and feels like he cannot do anything. Deku has just been told that he cannot be a hero and actually believes it this time. The way they were feeling here was done wonderfully and we as the viewer felt their pain. The excitement then came with Deku running into battle. His recklessness made the battle exciting, not to mention how much we want to root for Deku because he is the underdog fighting to save Bakugo. His tactics of using his backpack as a distraction made the battle interesting, and then All Might coming in despite him thinking he was unable was also a really powerful moment. 
and there's lasting impact for all the characters involved. All Might relearned what it meant to be a hero, and Deku proved that he could be a hero despite being scolded for his recklessness and lack of a quirk. And then Bakugo's pride was broken, the start of a character arc that spans both seasons and then some, I'm sure. And this battle led perfectly to one of the most emotional scenes in all of anime. Then the UA Sports Festival is probably the best example of how Boku no Hero is able to nail its fight scenes. With 17 different fights throughout it, most of them one-on-one, -on -one, it was able to introduce a lot of variety with them and make them all add to the story, even if only in a small way. The initial pace was able to introduce the major characters of the arc, and also letting Todoroki's position as one of the strongest be solidified, while also showcasing some of the new characters and introduce the themes of the arc. The one-on-one -on -one tournament itself was also magnificent. The narrative stakes were there for all the characters since the show had established how they wanted to be heroes and this was a chance to be recognized by the pros and by getting to see the new characters in the first two events we got to see and understand them a bit. The first battle with Deku and Shinsu was especially potent here because Deku was against someone else who wanted to be a hero but did not have a quirk that would make them appear to be able to. And this made Shinsu really sympathetic that we wanted to root for him despite him being up against the extremely likable main character. The battle with Ida and Hatsumi was interesting too because the different stakes they had for the fight where she just wanted to show off her technology and this demonstrates something we see later on with the different goals each character has. By having variety in the goals of the characters, the battles themselves become that much more interesting. Then the battle with Uraraka and Bakugo was one of the most powerful ones because it was able to capitalize on how Bakugo was the favorite to win the fight, both from being stronger and also from the narrative perspective with him being a main character, but then they built Uraraka up, showing how she was determined to win even if it was difficult and showed her using a strategy that nearly overwhelmed him. This battle channeled the power of an underdog story and showed Uraraka's feelings of failure once she lost which were really strong. But the battle was an important moment for Uraraka because it set her up to have more of a focus on battles and becoming stronger as the series progresses. And this is an aspect I hope they continue on into season 3 and beyond. But of course, the highlight of the arc has to be the battle between Deku and Todoroki. The production values were just amazing here, with a final clash of attacks having some of the best visuals I've ever seen, and the music just made everything even better. The narrative stakes were established early on in the arc with the rivalry between these two, both wanting to prove themselves as the best here so they can become the greatest hero. Deku is clearly the underdog in terms of raw power, so we want to see how he can overcome Todoroki. But the stakes go deeper here, with both characters having something else they are fighting for. Todoroki wants to prove that he can win with only his ice powers, while Deku wants to break him out of this mindset, finding it insulting that Todoroki is holding back, despite the fact that Deku is going all out, destroying himself in the process. The excitement in the battle is there as well with the multiple narratives with Todoroki's internal struggle, a battle itself where Deku is looking for a way to win and pushing himself more than his previous fights to live up to All Might's expectations. There was just so much power in every single aspect of the fight. What I think is most amazing here though is the fact that Deku lost. The show seemed to be building up to a final battle between Deku and Bakugo, but instead it went this direction, which actually does make a lot more sense given the established power of the characters. Todoroki is reminded of his true goals, remembering the encouragement that his mother and All Might gave him when he was young, and this really builds his character arc. There's also the fact that despite Deku losing the fight, he still accomplished his goal of saving Todoroki. But he also pushed his body too far where it can't fully be healed, making him have a permanent scar. This drives him forward where he needs to find a way to learn to control one for all. Another interesting aspect of the sports festival is how it was able to make the narrative stakes feel so powerful despite the actual stakes not being all that high. The sports festival is little more than just that. Sports. There's no world in danger, the characters will be healed after whatever happens, and they will go home at the end of the day. This is why it is hard for me to get into sports anime since the stakes are so low. I don't have a reason to care about the matches, and when all the sports anime are trying to do is to build up a game to be some very big important thing, it can just feel forced. Not to say all sports anime are necessarily this way, but it is a challenge they need to try to overcome for me to like them. Boku no Hero succeeds here without even looking like it needed to try. Because of the strong and likable characters that were introduced in the first season and the first few episodes of the second, we want to see them become heroes. We are already sold on that goal, so simply by framing the sports festival as a step to achieve this goal, we are hooked. So the tournament didn't really need any big surprises or outside force to make us care, and because of that, it is able to deliver some truly awesome fights in every aspect, while allowing the characters to fail without any big consequences. Also, touching briefly on the final exams, 
many of these same things apply. These fads are not for anything more than for them to avoid summer school, but they are able to work because of our investment in the characters with us wanting to see how they overcome the challenges the teachers present. Another thing the battles do to stand out is how logical they tend to be. Very rarely will you have a fight that ends in a way that doesn't make sense. While there are a lot of surprises, any power-ups make sense when explained, and a surprise victory is more often than not because of a character's strategies as opposed to their raw power. This is one of the keys to excitement, not having immersion breaking illogical twists, because as exciting as twists are, they fail if they don't make sense and so end up having the opposite effect. So that is why I feel like the fights in Boku no Hero are so amazing, and some of the best in all of anime. I know I could get into more details of some of the other fights, but most of the same things would apply to them as I have already discussed. Though if you want me to get more into them, let me know and we'll see what happens. And of course, the battles are far from the only reason I like Boku no Hero, so join me next time as I delve into another one of its great aspects. And yeah, I actually don't know which one it is because I'm kind of working on all these videos in parallel and I don't know what order I've decided to put them in. Anyway, I'll see you next time with a video about something. Talk to you then.